After over a month of waiting, it's finally clear. So tonight I'm gonna to try and shoot the Rosette Nebula, which is an emission nebula about 5,200 light years away, which is this many miles, if that helps you. And yeah, it's basically a star cluster surrounded by a massive ball of hydrogen and oxygen gas, which is being excited by the radiation from the star cluster, which makes all of the gases glow, which then emits photons that fly through space at the speed of light for 5,200 years to come through my telescope and hit my camera sensor. So that's what we're hopefully gonna capture tonight. Unfortunately, the rosette doesn't rise until about 9 p.m., but I should be able to add a bit of data to my Triangulum Galaxy project that I've been working on for a while now. Hopefully get three or four hours on that, and then we'll be able to go over to the rosette. So I have shot the rosette before, but it was before I had my electronic autofocuser, and looking back on it, the image is noticeably out of focus. So I'd like to do it properly and gather a lot more data than I did last time. In theory, I've got the full night to shoot, so I should be able to get seven hours of data before it sets at about 4 a.m. And then Astro Dark ends at just past 6 a.m. So I should hopefully be able to find another target so I don't waste any of the clear skies because I have not had a lot this year. So yeah, wish me luck. Right, here's everything set up. If you've watched this channel before, you'll be familiar with this, but I'll run you through everything that I've got anyway. So, on the back here, we've got the ZWO ASI 183 MC Pro, which I'm gonna cool down to minus 10 degrees C tonight, and they'll be at gain 111, offset eight, and five minute exposures. And then we've got the Star Adventure GTI as the mount, so I can point the telescope around and track the sky throughout the night. Then, one of the main pieces is the Red Cat 51, which will give me a fairly tight view on the targets that I'm doing because the sensor of the camera is actually quite small, so it crops in quite a lot. So even with just 250 millimeters focal length, I actually get a fairly tight frame around things. And then up here, we've got a little guide set up. So we've got a 30 millimeter guide scope and a ZWO ASI 120 mm mini guide camera. So that will just send pulses to the mount to keep us pointed exactly where we need to be throughout the whole night and help to correct any little errors that might arise. And then we've got the ZWO EAF, which will automatically focus the telescope every hour throughout the night I've got it set to. And every time the temperature changes, the focuser will refocus as that means that the, the telescope will slightly change shape. So we could drift out of focus with temperature changes. And then there's a little filter drawer here that I've got a Optolong LX stream in, which will just cut out all of the light pollution uh, or as much as possible. And it will just isolate the H alpha and oxygen three bands of light that are entering the telescope to just isolate the nebula. So yeah, that's the setup. I don't know what's happened to the sky. While I've been talking to you, that has just came out of nowhere. Let's hope that goes away. I'm going to power the PC on and carry on like normal and hopefully the next time I look up it's back to crystal clear. Okay I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you now so hopefully you can see it. If you can't see it then you won't be watching this bit so I don't know why I'm telling you. Anyway let's connect to the PC and it selects the right profile and load. Okay we're in. I just need to connect all the equipment now. So first thing is the camera when it eventually stops swirling around up here. There we go, right, so I'll hit connect on the camera and it's already set at minus 10, so I'm just gonna tell it to cool down. Now we need the focuser and I've got a manual rotator. I just connect that to make framing easier. And then the mount and last but not least, PhD2 guiding. I think the clouds are thinning out. I don't want to jinx it. There's PhD2 up now. You can see the, the clouds are moving relatively fast, so hopefully they go away. Right, so now I'm going to go to the imaging tab. We're just going to do a pass to the autofocus, so I'll hit start on that. While that's working, I'm just going to load my sequence up for this target and we'll see how the rosette's gonna look as well. 
because ideally I don't want to have to change the rotation between the targets because that means I'm going to have to take another set of flats and obviously spend some time actually spinning the camera around. Right, so that's my framing on the triangulum. Obviously you're not going to see most of that in any of these subs that I'm taking because they're going to be with Dell Extreme so I'm only capturing really small nebulae that are inside the galaxy and barely any of the actual like structure of it that'll be like heavily cut out i'll put an image up on the screen of the l pro data that i've already got on the triangulum because that's looking good i definitely still need more but i'm not far off hopefully right the autofocus is finished so i'm gonna go to the flat wizard and tell it to slew to zenith and that's just going to point the telescope straight up So the reason I've done that is so I can get my phone and get just a blank white screen on my phone and then balance it on top of the telescope and take 30 photos. The idea behind the flat is that all of the dust motes and things like that on my telescope and also things like in the actual optics of the scope, like vignetting and stuff like that. If I take a photo of a just plain white screen, I can then basically capture all of them regions that are going to be darker because of the vignetting and the dust motes and everything. I can take 30 of them, average them all out, apply some dark flats which just help get rid of some of the noise and then subtract them flat frames from all of my light frames which are the actual photos of the galaxy or nebula or whatever and then that will basically just get rid of all of the dust motes and the vignetting from my actual images of space so I don't have to clean my telescope as often and it just results in a better image. I probably should still clean my telescope though. So yeah, that's pointing straight up. So I'm gonna have to stop recording now because I'm recording on my phone. So I'll be back in a minute once these have been taken. Right, so my flats are done, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to wait a bit because yeah, there's still quite a lot of clouds and it's sort of covering the whole sky now, uh, except for over here. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for these to pass, which hopefully they do. I'll update you soon. Okay, I turned my back and now I've looked back up and it seems to be clear again, so I'm gonna get going. I have managed to check that this rotation will work for the rosette as well, and yes, I think it will. I'm actually quite happy with that because I've got, there's like a stem that comes off it that comes all the way down here. You can sort of see it a little bit on here. And yeah, having that going off the corner means that I'll be able to capture as much of that as possible whilst keeping the rosette central. So, I'm going to go to the sequencer and I'm just going to hit go. So the scope is slewing. Okay, it's made it roughly there. It's just going to plate solve now where it just takes a photo of the sky and then it will compare the image to a database of stars that I've got downloaded on my PC and that will just like figure out exactly where we're pointed and re us exactly where we need to be. If you're interested as well, the PC I'm using, it's a mini PC really, um, it's the Mealy Quieter 2 and then I'm just remoting into it using an iPad. And I've got a little like Wi-Fi extender out here. So that seems to have corrected. The guider is settling. So if I go back to the imaging tab actually, you should be able to see there's the guide graph starting to build. It's always gonna look a little bit rough to start off with, but that should calm down hopefully. The autofocus is finished and it started the first sub. So I'm gonna go inside now because it's getting very cold out here. So I'll show you the first sub when it comes in and I'll then update you throughout the night when we're changing targets and everything. And I'll set up the sequence for the rosette as well. So that's just ready to basically just hit go and that should be all they have to do hopefully. So yeah, I'll update you soon. Right, so the first sub on the triangulums came in. As you can see, there's the galaxy. There's not loads of detail obvious in it, although you can see lots of little blobs of red all over the place and they're actually nebulae in that galaxy. So it's pretty cool that I'm capturing that and that's all I really want to capture because I'm just gonna combine this data with the broadband data that I get with my other filter to just help bring out these in the final image. Yeah, I'm gonna let this run until about nine o'clock and then we'll hopefully get going with the rosette. Right, it's just gone nine o'clock and I think the rosette should be high enough to shoot now. 
So I'm going to go over to my sequence and I'm going to get rid of the triangular part and then the rosette. I'm just going to hit go on that. So now the telescope will slew. Okay, it seems to have made it there. Let's hope that the rosette is high enough. As you can see though, it is beautifully clear out here. That really bright spot there, uh, that is Jupiter. And then we've also got over there, that slightly reddish spot just above the bush, that is Mars. Right, so the telescope seems to have found its position. You can see this little group of stars in the centre here, just around there. That is actually the star cluster in the centre of the rosette, so being able to see that's a good sign. I'll see if I can show you where the rosette actually is in the sky. So we've got my telescope here, if we look exactly where that's looking you'll see it's pointing just below these two stars if i can find my finger there it is those two stars one there and one just below it those are just above the rosette so the rosette should be somewhere around here ish that's not massively accurate so don't use that as a guide on how to actually find it if you're trying to look for it but yeah it's roughly in that area Right, so the first five minutes sub has just started on the rosette. It's already looking pretty good. With just three seconds, I can just about see a little bit of the nebula already coming out. So that's promising. With 300 seconds being obviously 100 times that, it should look pretty amazing, hopefully. So I'll see you in five minutes. Just 10 more seconds. All right, there we go, it's done. It's just saving the image. And yeah, <laughs> that is, that is incredible. Right, um, yeah, I am very happy with that. So I'm gonna let that run until hopefully about 4 a.m. when it will set, which will give me what, like six and a half hours in theory. Right, so I'm gonna go inside because it is getting very cold out here again and I'll update you later when hopefully it's been a successful night. As you might be able to see behind me, the sky is now getting light because we've made it all the way to sunrise with no clouds. I've managed to get six or seven hours on the rosette, which I think will definitely give me an image that I can post, which will be good because I've not posted a new image in months. Uh, and I've also managed to add nearly two hours to an M81 and M82 projects that I've had going for probably every year now uh, so yeah that will help boost that a little bit hopefully but it's very cold out here and I'm getting tired because it is 7 a.m. and I've not been to sleep yet so I'm gonna pack everything away go get some sleep and I'll update you later when we're inside and probably be processing the image hopefully it's a few days later now I managed to get nearly six hours total about five hours 55 in the end I think it was and I've processed it all in PixInsight using Blur and Noise Exterminator like always and it's one of my best photos I've ever taken I think so I'm really happy with it but yeah that's going to be about it for this video I'll put the photo at the end obviously so I hope you like that and fingers crossed I'll get some more clear skies soon so that I can start putting more long form YouTube videos out there and I'll try and up the amount of shorts as well if I can so yeah thanks for watching I hope you like the photo and I wish you all clear skies